just last week, as you all know, the tragedy of the plane from Tehran occurred. And one of our family members, our uncle from Canada, was involved in that accident. And one of the things that then went through my head over the last few days was just that thought of if you are on a plane and if you are in a kind of moment where you know almost death is imminent, what is your reaction? Like, what do you actually do in that moment? You know this plane is heading towards the floor. You know what's coming. What do you physically do and what do you mentally do in those last 10, 20, 30 seconds? And it really was that, that for us, I think, as a family, it was a real, I think that sudden nature of it is what really hurts. And I think when I look to say the Fatima, and I reflect on all of us who know, who have seen family members go through pregnancy, a woman changes their mindset all of a sudden that they become secondary and their fetus becomes the primary focus of everything. If it's difficult for them to sit in a certain way but it's beneficial for their fetus, they will do it. If they need to eat a certain way but they don't really like to eat that way, they'll do it. Everything becomes changed. The woman becomes secondary and this unborn soul becomes the primary reason for their existence for those nine months. And I think to Fatima to Zahra and I reflect in try and imagine at that point in time where she knows this door is imminently coming through. She doesn't just have to think on do I protect myself or how do I mentally prepare for this moment? She now has a third cause to remind herself and say, do I protect myself? Do I mentally prepare? Or do I protect my fetus as a primary reason for my existence now? And what does Fatima to Zahra do in this moment? What does she protect first? Herself or her womb? And that loss for a mother, only a mother will ever truly appreciate. And maybe it's for Hussein to look on, to learn from his mother that, Oh Hussein, you too will have to face a loss of your own son, so look at how I'm having to deal with it. Maybe it was a lesson from a mother to a son. To say this is how I will bear with it. The same way that you'll need to bear when you lose your Ali and al Asghar in your own arms. But what about the heart of Fatima to Zahra at that moment? What about that noble lady and that decision she has to make as to what she protects first? And what about the husband that looks on in despair, knowing the imminent nature as to what's about to happen in front of him? And knowing that this same tragedy would repeat with the son to his side? What about this family? What about their tragedies? What about our connection to them? And what about our excuse? to not change in their way with these very tears that we feel. Allah has given them to us as mark schemes to know how to succeed in this test. And perhaps one of the reasons as to why they face these very tragedies is that so then we can reflect on them day after day, week after week, year after year till our very end we ask for inshallah. And maybe it's there so that it irks us, that it hits us, that each time we have this renewed opportunity to say, when most tears fall from my eyes because of the tragedies that they faced, that's my catalyst to change. But it's for you and I to decide, am I graduating this tear tonight or am I just letting it be once again? 
As we welcome our next guest, Brother Nouri Sardar, may I please ask you to recite a surah al fatiha for all of those mu'mineen who passed in that plane crash and all of the mu'mineen who have passed away in the past few days and for all of our marhumin present al fatiha <laughs> <laughs> 